The verse now reads, not by might, not by power, but by my Down syndrome kids, says the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> this video is going to encourage you. Again, it's going to show you that God works in mysterious ways. He's wonders to perform. You see, as a child of God, I don't think we realize how protected we are, how much God is watching over us. And I think this testimony that we're going to listen to from Walter Weith, I would say, is one of my favorite preachers. And again, if you want some serious substance, on the internet and you want to watch something that will blow your mind watch his series called total onslaught uh, boy i hope you have the time and the brain cells and the willingness to study because this stuff is deep <laughs> i mean so deep <laughs> these are like an hour to two hours presentation in some cases almost three hours presentations but i'll tell you something it's not boring it's engaging it's informative it's mind-blowing it's also spiritual um, and I would encourage that. It, it's got a number of different series, of course, but I will say the total onslaught presentations that I've listened to, I was like, my Lord, my God, help us. <laughs> like, help, help, help. Anyway, um, having said that, let's listen to this video. And I think this is a testimony of his where he's going to encourage us about how God can actually send a sending angels to watch over his children, especially those of us who are doing the work of the Lord. Uh, you, you need protection from the Lord. And I think this one is actually very interesting, the way that he explains it. And I do believe what he's talking about here is an angel. You'll see what I mean. So anyway, share your thought and perspective with me at the end of this video. Make sure you like and subscribe to the page. Click the bell icon for more. Let's get to this video. Okay, this is Walter Weith, and he is talking about an angel in disguise. Thank you. Back in 1993, I was invited to do a series in Canada. I just want to say, we didn't fill the Massey Theatre. There were 1,260 seats, and every seat was full bar one. Always the same one, every single night. And it was that one. It was just like here, yeah, there was a door there, there was a aisle, there was an aisle, and an aisle, and one seat, that one, was open. You know the story, don't you? You must know the story. You don't know the story? I'm sure you know the story. Yeah. And we had double lectures. Well, let me tell the story then. Yeah, we had double lectures every night, doubling up. It was my first series in a foreign country. I mean, I'd done series in elsewhere, but the first foreign one. And before, I'd never done a series by myself. I always worked with a little man called Duplessy. Do you know him? Yes. Yeah. He always says, Walter, you knock him over, I pick him up. <laughs> <laughs> He's a sweetie pie. <laughs> Yes, and so I was all out by myself and I thought, Lord, how am I ever... This story is a lifesaver for me, really. Because it's sustained me for 23 years, this story. It's really very important to me. And the first time alone, first time in Canada, I mean, uh, the president there had written a nice letter to these people over here, blackening my name before I got here. And uh, so I was met by a brick wall when I got here. So I had to learn very early on what brick walls were all about. And then we had these double lectures. And when I started getting into the real truths, you know, Mark of the Beast and all of these things, did you know that the Canadians could be very acrimonious? Not as bad as the Germans, but bad enough. And they would storm to the front and they would... Uh, get physical and some of them would run onto the stage and grab the mic from me and shout into the audience the antichrist is not the pope this man is the antichrist and i had to deal with all of that and they got more and more aggressive and eventually they they did want to be get physical but the hall was big i mean 1260 people that's a lot right 
And Vansel of them, they were all in the back there. They couldn't be bothered about me suffering with all these people in the front here. And because they were back-to-back -back lectures with a 15-minute break, I would come off the stage and try and go to the back. I never got there. They would come and they would accost me. But every night, that door, while I was busy with my first lecture, would open and a Down syndrome kid, now you know the story, hey? Yeah? Would come walking in and he'd go and sit in that chair. And he'd, he'd be cute, he'd very downs. He was about this big, tongue hanging out. Uh, and he'd sing. <laughs> Not bothersome, he'd sit there. And then when this drama started and these people came to, a, to become aggressive, he would get up. He's got, they, you know, they've got these short little stocky arms. And he go, he'd go through them and he'd come and stand with me. He'd put his arms around me and he'd put his head there and he'd sing. And there's no way you can hit somebody who's got a Down syndrome kid hanging on him. <laughs> it's true. You, it's physically impossible. You can't do it. <laughs> no matter how aggressive you are. And it became so, I became totally dependent on my Down syndrome kid. And two or three times he was late. I would stretch my lecture. Believe me, I can stretch lectures. Until the door went in and I would heave a sigh of relief and he would sit. Why was that chair open? The same one. I mean, it's 1,260 people. They can sit anywhere, right? That one was open. It was his chair. Oh, that's good. That's good. <laughs> and then... Uh, we moved from the Massey Theater, I don't know, where did we move to? Hmm. To the other side of Vancouver, to the church. There I was on the other side of Vancouver, and of course he was gone. Now, who was the Down Syndrome kid? I thought he was part of the furniture, or maybe a neighbor's kid, because he always came alone, and the question is, you know, why is there no support, no parents, no this, no that, nothing? And how does he get here? And how does he get in? And, you know, questions like that. And I thought, well, he's, you know, he's part of the establishment. And I missed him. And then Amazing Discoveries is very kind to me. They only give me, you know, seven lectures in a row or so on a, on a day. And it was a Sabbath and I was flying the next day. And we were on the other side of the city. And I had something like, I don't remember, six or seven lectures, really. Something ridiculous. And in those days there were slides. You didn't have a thing like this. And so you had all these carousels standing around and packing in the slides to get them back into their little packets. And I'd given the second last lecture, and in the last lecture, about halfway through the lectures, the doors at the back open up, and the Down syndrome kid comes walking in. Can you believe that? And I thought, no, this, this is weird. No parents, no adult. Other side of Vancouver, that means buses, transport, you can't walk. He's not part of the establishment. Who are you? And you know what? The same seat, that one, was open. And he sat right in the front. And I gave that last lecture and I looked at him. And then the, after the lecture, I had to pack all these slides back because I had to fly the next day. I had all my little packets there, and I put them in there. And all the people left to have drinks in the foyer. And only he and I were in this church. And then he got up, and I was standing on the front behind a pulpit thing, packing my slides, and he got up, and he walked around, and he came up the stairs, and he came behind the pulpit, put his arms around me, put his head there, little tongue hanging out, and he sang, <laughs> like that. And I put the slides in, and I looked at him, and I put the slides in, <laughs> and I picked up the courage, and I said to him, I pushed him away like this, and I looked at him like this, and I said, okay, I want you to answer me one question. Mm. Are you a man, or are you an angel? Mm. And he did this. This is exactly like this. He did. 
And he walked off and nobody ever saw him again. Oh, wow. Now, I've had people run on the stage in Slovenia wanting to kill me. I've had uh, those series done under police protection with the police commissioner sitting in the front and 200 sol soldiers or police around the building protecting us. Those guys ran on the stage, they took my little translator, she was a little girl like this, shoved her that she went flying, grabbed the mic out of my hand, went flying, pushed me around and I marched everyone, ordered everyone out. Nobody were left. Nobody left. They had to leave. The audience got up like one and said, you leave. <laughs> Very interesting. And you know what? Doesn't rattle me. <laughs> Doesn't rattle me. Mm. I'm not worried whether they run on the stage, whether they push me around, took this little translator, I said, relax, everything's fine. There's a Down syndrome kid here. <laughs> Somewhere. I don't have to see him anymore. I don't have to speak to him anymore, but I know he's there. And he's no Down syndrome kid. One angel, 186,000 mm. Assyrian soldiers dead in one night. Don't mess with a Down syndrome kid. But the verse now reads, not by might, not by power, but by my Down syndrome kid, says the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, that angel did sustain me. So it was 1,260 minus one. Praise the Lord. Oh, that was encouraging and uplifting in, indeed. I believe <laughs> exactly what he's saying to be true. That's not delusional, friends. There's been experiences in my own life. I could look back and say, oh, okay, this, uh, this, wasn't just, this wasn't just a human being. There was something else going on here. If you look at the signs and so on. And I think we don't realize how much, uh, like the Bible says, we entertain angels, right? And that's why you got to be mindful of how you treat people. Because sometimes God is sending someone to talk to you. I don't go around looking for angels everywhere. I don't do that. But I'm just simply saying is keep an open mind because uh, the Lord is watching over his children. And sometimes um, you might be thinking this is going on. This is happening perhaps. But no, sometimes the Lord in himself is protecting you to one of his angels. Be not forgetful to entertain strangers, we are told. Strangers. Who are these strangers? For thereby, some have entertained angels unawares, my dear friends. You may have entertained angels and not knowing that you did. And this is actually in reference to Lot. When Lot entertained the angels that came to his house, he thought they were just men. But he had hospitality. He welcomed them into, into their home. Uh, little did he know, he was welcoming his protectors into his home. Because that very night... Sodom and Gomorrah was going to be destroyed and Lot and his family were called to be saved. Unfortunately, his wife looked back. And I think we can do a whole other study on remember Lot's wife. Oh boy, that will be another study. But anyway, friends, I just want you to be encouraged today and know that the Lord is watching over you. The Lord is protecting you. The Lord is keeping his eyes on you. And sometime God is sending his angels, man to do a work just like it's done for Walter Weith in our lives. And I think there's protections happening around your life. There are ways that God is keeping you that you might not even realize. In verse 7, we are told that the angel of the Lord and keepeth round about them that fear him and delivers them. And I love this, my dear friends. And I think this is a good, this is a good one to think about when you compare this text to Job's. And I, by the way, I got, a, I got a Job's sermon coming this week. I'm still touching things up, okay? But we are told when Satan wanted to destroy Job, he could not destroy Job. And 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 look what Satan said about Job, right? It says, Satan answered the Lord and said, Does Job feel God for nothing? Has not thou made an edge about him? <laughs> edge about him and in and about his house, about all that he have on every side. Thou hast blessed the work of his hands, and his substance is increased in the land. <laughs> wow. Whew. So what, he, what does he know? He knows that there is a divine protection around Job. And he's saying, Lord, remove the protection. And I can, I can mess with Job. And the idea is, in the same way, God places protection around his children. And as long as, long as those protections are there, Satan can't mess with you. He can't mess with the child of God. Greater is he that is in me, we are told, than he that is in the world. 
So one reference he made was about the angel of the Lord going to the Assyrian army, 185,000 in one night. You're talking about power. You're talking about, you talk about a victory. You're talking about greatness. Uh, friends, they are more that are with us than they that are with them. So the Christian man has to understand that. We are not on a losing side, my friends. We are on the winning side. And if we have trust and faith in Jesus, he will watch over his children. He's watching over you. Even when bad things happen, friends, think about it. It could have been much worse. <laughs> even when the worst things happen, even what you will look at in your life and say, man, this was a bad thing. But guess what? It is all men good with grace and mercy. There's blessing in disguise, even in the midst of the wrongs. But could you imagine how much more could have gone wrong? Were it not for the grace and God of God, his divine protection over your life? Was it not for the holy angels of God keeping eyes over your home? Could you imagine, friends? Watching over your children? You have no idea. I don't think we'll never know. I think he will. It's when we get to heaven, friends. We get to ask questions and God will give us a vision and a picture and help us to see the recordings. Hopefully we can see the pictures and the, the movies of what our lives was like. I'm looking forward to that. Oh, by the way, James, this was supposed to happen that day, but the angel of the Lord did that. That was supposed to happen. That disease, that accident, that home was supposed to be blown up. Your house was supposed to catch fire on that day, but the angel of the Lord protected you. So be thankful, man. Be thankful because you have no idea how good God is to you and how much of his angels are watching over you. You have no idea how much the Lord is protecting you. So I'm hoping today that you will find encouragement through this. You'll find strength to go on. You will keep an eye open. Like we read in the Hebrews today, just uh, be aware because sometime we entertain angels unawares. Thank you for listening. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you like and subscribe to the page, click the bell icon for more. Listen, man, every thumbs up matter. This is how you push the content into the algorithm. Share the content with somebody else as well. And comment below whether you like or dislike, you agree or disagree. I want to hear from you. Have a good one. Bye.